Pope Francis has recently proclaimed Karl Wojtyla, better known as Pope John Paul II, a saint. This is one of the quickest elevations to sainthood in centuries. But what did he do? What was it that made John Paul II a saint? Maybe because he was a man who had suffered a lot, but never gave up hope. Carol's family died when he was young. He lost his mother before he was 10. When he was 12, his brother died. And finally at 21, he lost his father too. His homeland was attacked by the Nazis in 1939, and his country was conquered. Then conquered again by the Soviet Red Army in 1945. Or maybe it was because of his great culture and humanity. John Paul II was passionate about life. He loved sports and the beauty of the outdoors. Even as Cardinal, he continued to ski and kayak. He loved poetry and was an actor, dreaming of life in theater. Under the Nazi regime, he worked hard in a quarry and came to know the life of a laborer. He was also exceptionally bright and thrived as both an academic and charismatic teacher whose classrooms overflowed with young students or maybe because he traveled so much and reached out to so many people. Pope John Paul II was extremely active. He made 250 pastoral visits throughout the world to a total of 129 countries and wrote 14 encyclicals. The Pope started the tradition of World Youth Day, participating in nine of them himself, bringing together millions of young Catholics who were so inspired by him that they became known as the JP2 generation or perhaps because he was a champion of human rights. During his days in Poland, he witnessed firsthand the consequences of oppressive governments that took the lives of the weak and defenseless. These experiences inflamed in him an ardent conviction to fight against ideologies. Thanks to this, he played a key role in bringing down the Iron Curtain and with it, the collapse of the Soviet Union. Now certainly, all of these things are important, but aren't we forgetting the most essential element? John Paul II is being named a saint above all because he placed Christ at the center of his life and accepted the great mission that Christ offered him every day with love and hope. JP2 certainly underwent a lot of suffering. It was his father's faith and life of prayer that were like a first seminary for him. Witnessing the sacrifices made by his friends and countrymen in the face of great persecution, even to the point of giving their lives, he learned to trust that hope was stronger than fear and love stronger than death. He lived this lesson when an attempt was made on his life. With hope, he overcame the fear and agony of those days, and with love, he sought out the man who had shot him to personally forgive him. JP2 wasn't just active, he was deeply apostolic in everything he did. He knew that the crowds that came weren't there just because of him, but rather because people really hungered for God. As a champion of human rights, JP2 fought for the unborn, the sick, the elderly, the poor, and the oppressed. Above all though, he fought for the right to believe. He knew that a world without God is a world without joy, without beauty, without true humanity. John Paul II invited us to open wide the doors to Christ. He told us not to be afraid, to welcome Him into our lives, our families, and our societies. Because Christ knows us better than any other. He knows the desires of our hearts, and only He is able to fulfill those desires. John Paul II knew that Christ called him to serve, and so he poured out all of his gifts and talents, his strength and his health to the very end to show us Christ. And that is why we celebrate him now as Saint John Paul II. Christ was the center of his life, he was his joy, his strength, and his greatest love.